Hi, this is Michael Altos, and we are continuing our discussion of psychiatric and CNS drugs, and this is part three. The next drugs we're going to speak about are anti-epileptic drugs. And before we get into these drugs, I want to highlight a few drugs that we've already discussed in detail before. And these are drugs that are actually the fastest acting anti-seizure medications available to us. They are the barbiturates, the benzodiazepines, and propofol. All of these drugs can be used to stop a seizure quickly, albeit with different side effects that we've discussed previously. The first drug we're going to speak about in this section is phenytoin, also called dilantin. Phenytoin acts by blocking sodium channels, as well as some other channels, including calcium and NMDA receptors. Phenytoin is 90% protein bound, and for this reason, we can see lots of changes in patients' phenytoin levels when there are changes in their protein status. For example, patients who have hypoalbuminemia may have increased levels of free drug at a given dose. The therapeutic serum level of phenytoin is 10 to 20 micrograms per milliliter, and the toxicity occurs very quickly after 20 to 30 micrograms per milliliter. So this drug has a very narrow therapeutic index, and we can see levels change when phenytoin is given in conjunction with other drugs. Increased levels occurring with amiodarone, fluconazole, isoniazid, and coumadin, and decreased levels in patients who are chronic alcohol users, as well as those taking antineoplastics, phenobarbital, diazepam, and calcium. Phenytoin is metabolized by hepatic enzymes with zero order kinetics at high plasma levels. And so you can imagine it's very easy for patients to move from therapeutic to toxic levels as they get to high plasma levels and transition from first to zero order kinetics. Side effects of phenytoin are dose dependent and some of them occur over time. These can include CNS effects like nystagmus, ataxia, nausea and vomiting, hypotension, gingival hyperplasia, and phenytoin is also a teratogen and should not be used in pregnant patients. At higher doses, both acute and chronic toxicity can occur, which would manifest as respiratory distress, encephalopathy, tremor, hallucinations, movement disorders, and cardiac arrhythmias. Phenytoin is usually started with a loading dose of 10 to 20 milligrams per kilogram, which is usually about 1,000 milligrams in most adults. Patients on phenytoin may need higher doses of non-depolarizing neuromuscular blocking agents, and this is probably related to the sodium channel blocking action of this drug. Phenytoin has to be given as a slow infusion, no faster than 50 milligrams per minute, in order to avoid the hypotension that, that ensues. Phenytoin can precipitate in IV lines and catheters, rendering them unusable, and therefore it should never be given mixed together with any other drugs in the IV line. A prodrug called phosphenytoin, or prodilantin, is available. This drug is given and then metabolized into phenytoin in the patient's body. It can be infused more quickly without the same degree of hypotension. The next drug, and perhaps one of the most commonly used anti-epileptic drugs nowadays, is levetiracetam, or Keppra, usually dosed between 500 to 15 milligrams, IV or orally, every 12 hours. The mechanism of action is not entirely clear, but we know this drug has very few side effects, no hepatic metabolism, minimal protein binding, and the only caveat is that dosing is usually decreased in patients with renal disease. Most patients who have seizures or are at risk for seizures, for example, patients who have tumors or other neurologic or neurosurgical problems, are often placed on Keppra. A newer drug that's being used more commonly is lacosamide or Vimpat, which is often used in combination with other anti-epileptic drugs. And so you should be familiar with this drug and you may see it um, being given on the floor or patients taking it at home. 
Of note, Vimpad is a controlled substance. It's a Schedule V substance. Gabapentin, or Neurontin, is an older anti-epileptic drug. It's not really used for epilepsy anymore. We commonly see gabapentin being used in chronic neuropathic pain or patients with diabetic neuropathy. Some anesthesia providers like to use it preoperatively to help prevent pain. And studies are conflicting about whether this works or not. Gabapentin needs to be dosed several times a day. And it really has very little protein binding or hepatic metabolism. That's it for the anti-epileptic drugs. In the next section, we'll finish up this discussion about CNS and psychiatric medications.